Well, the 2020 census is underway and it impacts everything from how we vote to how much money our state receives. In the coming months, the census office wants to hear from all of us to make sure the numbers are correct. This is Allison Zimmer watching off for us tonight to explain how you can make sure you're giving the right information to the right people. That's right, Robin Elizabeth, and people are especially vulnerable online. And for the first time ever, you'll actually be able to fill out that survey out on the web, which is why the census office wants to remind you they will never ask for your full social security number, your bank account or your credit card numbers, nor are they going to ask you for any money or donations. But with all the different ways survey gatherers need to get their information, there's a lot to look out for. What is the 2020 census? It's the beginning of a new decade, and for the census office, it means a lot of counting. By mid-March, you'll have received some form of a survey. April 1st marks census day, and if you don't respond, Census workers will be knocking on your door to get surveys answered. The door knocking is expected to begin in May and will wrap up by July. If you don't want someone to come knocking at your door, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and self-respond, either online or by phone or sending back the questionnaire. There are ways to look out for people who may be trying to fool you into thinking they're a part of the census office. If a census worker comes up to your door, they will have an ID badge with their photograph and a U.S. Department of Commerce watermark with an expiration date, as well as a branded census bag. By law, every person who works with the information that we're taking is sworn for life to keep that information confidential. The census also determines a lot of other aspects for local government, namely the number of people who live in an area impacts how much funding comes in from the federal government. It's something state demographer Elizabeth Garner explained to us this past spring. So we pay our federal taxes and then the feds then reallocate those taxes in terms of programs back to the state. The population count also plays a role in coming up with congressional and state legislature districts. With the number of people that have moved here in the last decade, Colorado appears on track to get another congressional seat. We're on kind of the edge in 2010. Uh, but we're pretty solidly there this decade. But again, the most important piece is that every person's counted. Now, the census also means some additional jobs in the area. The Bureau is hiring seasonal workers. The pay can range from 16 to $22 an hour. Always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. Allison Zimmerman, News 5.